LVC, the network, television redefined, high quality content for high quality viewers. Welcome to Members Only. I am TW on the man, and today we have the fabulous, like phenomenally fabulous, <laughs> <laughs> Tierra Shamir Williams. How are you doing, sweetie? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. Pleasure for you to be here. You know, it's been a long time coming trying to get it you has, here, right? It has, it has. You're the world's busiest woman. <laughs> <laughs> and let us make sure we get it right. You are mm -hmm. the VP, Head of Inclusion, Diversity, and Equity for Moet Hennessy, correct? Yes, I am. It's a big role, baby. Thank you. <laughs> it's a good role, though. Yeah. Yes, it's a good role. Mm -hmm. um, before we actually get into your role and what it entails, um, for those that may not know, um, who is Tierra Shamir Williams? Ooh, that's an interesting question. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> well, as we talked about before, I am deeply, deeply a Midwest woman. Mm. My mother is Detroit. My father is Chicago. So I would say definitely Midwest values raise me. Um, uh, I am a biracial woman, mm -hmm. um, all encompassing, multicultural. Um, and I think by far, you know, what, what describes me the most and what I'm most proud of is an advocate. I'm an advocate in my role. I'm an advocate in my personal life with my friends, family, so on and so forth. Like that is what I love to do. So mm -hmm. that is, that's who Tierra is. Mm. Outside of being extremely fabulous, <laughs> like what's your passion in life? Your, like your deep passion? My passion. Um, it, it's funny that you asked that. So if you would have asked me years ago, I would have said something very common like money. Mm. <laughs> money is my passion. Um, and honestly, that's why I gave up a lot of the things that I did, like scholarships and whatnot, to head to New York because I wanted to be this woman on Wall Street. Mm. Um, so it started there, but as I started to grow within the world of Wall Street, mm -hmm. I noticed that no one looked like me. You know, as, I, as, as promotion came after promotion, there was less and less people that looked like me. And that is when I found my passion. And it was at that point when I took the shift from being on Wall Street to really being an advocate again mm -hmm. um, and, and creating all kinds of initiatives at Blackstone, which was the company that I was at Correct. around diversity, about inclusion, about, um, you know, just highlighting and advocating for those voices that weren't normally seen in that building. Um, and I think, you know, once I found my passion is really when my career took off because I was able to be me. I was able to uh, show exactly who Tierra was and all of those different parts of me sh shine through. And that's what kind of lift me up the ladder and uh, gave me the role that I'm in now. Um, and what I've been doing for the past 15 years is being in the space of diversity. In your earlier part of your career, and you started in finance, correct? Mm -hmm. Did you ever think you would be here? Absolutely not. Mm. Absolutely not. I, um, you know, seeing that I, I left Minneapolis and I came straight to New York out of high school and my dreams were majorly focused on finance. Yep. Like I was going to be that, mm -hmm. that B mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in charge um, on Wall Street and everything changed. Like when I got there, I didn't feel seen. I didn't feel included. I couldn't be myself. And never in a million years would I think that one, I would change from finance, which is that money making role to being an advocate and then going from finance to a completely new industry, which is wines and spirits. Um, 
but it was it was something that I needed to do for myself. Mm -hmm. You know, I speak about diversity of people and thought and leadership and all of these things. I wasn't diversifying my own experiences. Um, so that's when I made that's when I made the switch. I started marketing myself, telling about my different skill sets, what's transferable from finance, which is a lot. Um, and ended up sitting on a panel with someone from LVMH. Um, they love my story. They love that um, I had this experience uh, coming from finance, which I believe prepared me for any diversity role because wealth is the basis of all inequality. Mm. Um, and uh, marketed myself and he, he liked what I had to say and he offered me this role. And here I am today. And it was on ever since. It was on ever since. Mm. Mm -hmm. Being that um, you are VP, Head of Inclusion, Diversity and Equity, what does your role entail? People ask me this all the time. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a difficult question because, you know, different industries, different organizations have a very different description of what their chief diversity officer or whoever mm -hmm. is in charge of diversity within their respective organization. So. I created this plan and it's actually in my strategy. So I cover people, brand, business, and culture. People are those HR components. It's recruiting, it's retention, it is intentional investment into our diverse employees. So we're creating a pipeline of leaders. Uh, brand is making sure that every brand underneath the Moet Hennessy portfolio is inclusive with their marketing, with their partnerships, with the people that they align themselves to as campaign drivers. Business is supplier diversity. I am so proud to announce that we launched um, supplier diversity at Moet Hennessy last year. Mm -hmm. We highlighted different diverse vendors to come in and have exposure to all of our brands. We made a commitment to double our percentage of spend by 2027. And we also two, we sponsored 200 diverse suppliers um, as far as getting their certification as a diverse vendor. Wow. Yeah. Um, and then lastly, culture. Okay. Culture is what I like to categorize as the personality of our business and how our leaders lead. Mm -hmm. So that is, you know, the most common trainings that we're all aware of, the microaggressions, unconscious bias. Mm -hmm. It's our ERG communities. But most importantly, it's, it's how we are teaching our leaders to be inclusive. Mm. That is that is kind of my remit. As we come out of the pandemic, um, what are some of the challenges you foresee in the workforce? Honestly, I think first and foremost, it is mental health. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's just there's a lot of folks that were so used to being at home and secluded and now coming back to the workplace. It's a challenge. It's challenge having that that interaction with people again. Mm -hmm. It's a challenge coming out of your shell mm -hmm. again, especially for introverts. So I am naturally an introvert. I know <laughs> when to turn it on, Yeah. but naturally I'm an introvert. I will gladly stay home in my room <laughs> with a TV and a glass of champagne or Hennessy or what have you and just relax. But mental health is, is something that is definitely the biggest challenge and it's something that Moet Hennessy as an organization is laser focused on. We have uh, different platforms where we offer free counseling for mm -hmm. our employees. Mm -hmm. We offer wellness reimbursement, um, just a myriad of things to really help with the challenges of, of being back into society. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As, as you speak about, you know, mental issues and challenges, things of that nature, I think a lot of people are struggling mm -hmm. mentally. Um, they were struggling before pandemic, but the pandemic like really yeah. sealed it and I think amplified it. Yep. Um, my goal is to always check on people. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. when, whenever me and you, we see each other, my question is, how are you doing? Yeah. Are you okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, cause if this ain't right, yeah. the rest won't follow. Absolutely. You know, and I, I I, I tell people all the time, the mind is so, so powerful. You can literally trick your body mm -hmm. into being sick mm -hmm. or being healthy. Mm -hmm. Like this controls everything. So mm -hmm. you have to make sure this is right, first and foremost, beyond anything else in your life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is it difficult to retain a diverse workforce? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, when you think of this industry among many, many others, like we are pre predominantly white male over 50 years old. And mm -hmm. then you bring in that overseas 
aspect of things as well. Yep. Um, people from Paris and France and, and so on that really are, you know, the controllers of our business who don't necessarily understand the culture shift in America, the history of women and what they've struggled, people of color, so on. Um, so it is hard. Um, it's hard changing hearts and minds, mm. but it's also hard just creating that buy-in on why this is so important um, and why, you know, not just important for the culture of our business, but our business, like yes. the actual business mm -hmm, part. Mm -hmm. um, if you looked at the trajectory of the U.S. and the population, like it doesn't look like any of our leaders. Mm -hmm. It looks like you and I. Correct. It is multiracial. Um, and us, you and I, being the biggest consumer of luxury goods, meaning the wines and spirits that we sell, as well as everything that we sell with under the LVMH umbrella. Mm -hmm. Like, if you don't understand that, we are, we're going down. We need to future-proof our business, retain this talent, and have those different ideas and um, experience, lived experiences, mm -hmm. really con contribute to, to what we're planning ahead. Do you think the great resignation is over? No, I don't. Mm. <laughs> I definitely don't. I think, you know, with my finance background and, and the recession that we are currently in, I don't care what anyone so that's says. A fact. We're in it. We're in it. <laughs> mm. I think people are going to continue to find ways to be innovative and work for themselves. So I think we're going to see more resignations mm. for sure, just because of that simple reason. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How important is it to cultivate um, a healthy work culture? Extremely, extremely important. Mm -hmm. You know, I talk about those days when I was in finance and I, I couldn't be myself. Um, and I wasn't growing, like no one was investing into me. Um, I was just stuck. I was stuck. And that's when I had that turning point of, of making the change to go into diversity. But as it relates to just Moet Hennessy specifically, and, and honestly, any organization, the more you invest into your talent, the more that you allow them to be themselves, they will be more innovative. They will work harder for you. Yep. They will, it just, the list goes on and on. And, and there are millions of studies that say this exact research is, is true. You can think of McKinsey, you can think of plenty different organizations that are reputable, that have the research to prove if a person feels safe and, and included, your, your business will skyrocket. That's right. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, my last question to you in regards to um, DEI is, um, is inclusive leadership the core mm -hmm. of DEI? I think, it, I think that is the core, but just as important is representation. Um, you know, 100 black men, I think it, I'm, I hope I don't misquote their saying, but <laughs> they say, you know, if you, if you see it, you can be it. Mm -hmm. And this is so true because as I see looking at the Moet Hennessy board or leadership team that consists of a black woman, a multiracial woman, a Latino woman, a black male, an Asian male, a Latino male, like the list goes on and there's two white males as well. It, it gives everyone within our organization something to look up to and mm -hmm. say, hey, I can be that person because that is a multiracial woman in that seat. Mm -hmm. So I can, do, I can do that as well. So I think inclusive leadership is just as important as representation. I want to give a toast to you, right? Okay. So this is what we're going to do. Okay. Um, I want to toast to you because you're absolutely amazing at everything you do, Thank you. your career, where you started, mm -hmm. where you're at now and where you're going, um, your level of geniusness, brilliance. Like, um, I've not known you that long, but just being <laughs> around you and feeling your energy and reading your story and also featuring you in the Addison Suite magazine, mm -hmm. um, you're a force to be reckoned with. Like, I appreciate it. <laughs> your motivation, you know, just you. keep going, keep, being a amazing representation that that image that you carry mm -hmm. we need to see more of that mm -hmm. because um our image is looking pretty bad i hear for the most part you yeah. know and everything that you do what you're doing for moet hennessy um and what you will continue to do mm -hmm. the best is yet to come 
please continue to keep inspiring us. Thank you so much. We I, more. I appreciate the opportunity to highlight some of this. Bomb. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I want to switch gears really quick. Okay. As you know, we're celebrating 50 years of hip hop. My fave. Hip hop <laughs> turns 50. Can you believe it? No, it makes me feel old. <laughs> I, I'm going to say we're like the fine wine. Mm -hmm. We age in time. Mm -hmm. You know, hip hop is my big brother. I look at it like okay. that, you yeah. know. What was that beat, mm -hmm. song, or lyric that made you fall in love with hip hop? Hmm. This is, you know, I have like a million answers. Uh, if you. Okay. Yep. Let me, let me think. Um, if you really rep hip hop, you got yeah. a million answers, but just give me, yes, yes, give yes, me yes. something. <laughs> I'm going to give you something. Okay. And this is just because I spent so much time in New York yep. and I am Jay-Z ride or die fan. Interesting. So, um, I love the combination of joining hip hop and R&B together. So I will say. Uh, Jay Z, "Love for Free" with Rel. Ooh. Yes, I love that. Great song. choice. Love that song. So that was it that made you fall in love. That right there. Yeah, I think so. Uh, okay. Yeah. For me, I'm gonna go back a little bit further. Yep. Um, the introduction to the love was Rock Him. Mm. I ain't no joke. So back in the day, um. Hip hop is in me. Mm -hmm. A lot of people may not know that, but because you were a DJ, correct? Yeah. But it's in me. So mm -hmm. back in the day, we had VCRs, mm -hmm. and we used to record videos from Video Soul. Yeah. Uh, we had the jukebox in, in Philly. Mm -hmm. You call and 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 put the number in, and then the video pops up, and yep. then your phone mm -hmm. bill is through the roof. <laughs> um, MC Hammer. They put me in the mix. Came on like thirty times, and one day it was nuts. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I used to record the videos right, mm -hmm. and write the lyrics down. Mm -hmm. and just rewind play rewind. that's when I knew I was like okay this yep. is this mm -hmm. is it for me and mm -hmm. the early late 80s early and mid 90s mm -hmm. hip-hop was oh my god oh yeah it was I, I, I wish I would have knew Rakim was it for you because we just did an event with him and Dapper Dan <laughs> what yeah 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 Rakim. I would have invited you, absolutely. So, can you please keep me on the list Yes, next of time? course. Now now you're just on it, no I, matter what. I can dig it. <laughs> Rakim, Kane, mm -hmm. um, everybody's top five for the most part is the same. Yeah. You can't leave out Rakim. You can't leave out Big Daddy Kane. Mm -mm. Like, they mm -mm. gotta be top five, top two. They, yep. Though, that was my thing. Absolutely. And, um, as time went by, you know, the list grew. Mm -hmm. But I'm so glad that we're celebrating 50 years. Yeah. You know, um, Moore Hennessy is pushing an amazing campaign for that. Mm -hmm. Looking forward oh, to you'll the, see us in a lot of places. I can't wait. <laughs> you'll see us in a lot of places. I a lot of really cool spaces at yeah. that. So stay tuned. Okay, good deal. Um, <laughs> now you remember, right? You know that, right? Oh, yeah. I'm in You're here. You're part of members only. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we thank you for being here. Mm -hmm. um, you could have been anywhere in the world. But you're here with us. But you're here with us. You yes. gave us your time. Um, mm -hmm. Anything we can do to add value to you, mm -hmm. your movement, your brand, LVMH, Moet Hennessy, we are here for it all with bells on. Thank you. I hope you know that's a two-way street. Amen. That's what relationships are for. Relationships make the world go round. Mm -hmm. And people don't, you know, a lot of people underestimate that. Relationships get you in places your money can't. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm big on cultivating relationships. Amen. So thank you for being here. The best is yet to come, my friend. Mm -hmm. Let's do one more cheers, baby. Thank you so much. Thank you for being you. Thank you. L O V C, the network. Television redefined.